Hey Nexters, I'm Justin Wilcox. My blog is Customer Dev Labs, and today we're talking about going to market. So when I first started building my companies, I would get together with a group of friends, we'd come up with an idea, and we'd hack away for hours and hours and days and days and weeks, and then eventually the glorious day would come where we would launch our products onto the world. And it was really exciting, was tons of fun, and eventually we would end up getting some press. And what, a lot, what happened a lot of times is that we'd end up driving a whole bunch of people into our funnel, and then at the end of it, nothing would come out. It turns out that we'd spent so much time building the product and hacking away and uh, had such a good time that we never took the time to optimize our funnel, and we ended up with a big gaping hole through which all of our leads fell out. So by optimizing, I mean we didn't know what the right messaging was about our product, we didn't test pricing, uh, we didn't even test the channels that we were going to go to market into. So uh, I'll give you a specific example. I was working on an app, it's called Pic Translator. It lets you take a picture of a foreign text and then it will translate the text inside that picture for you into the language that you speak. So we put together, we, we hacked it out, we put together some press and then we launched it and the response was actually really great. We had thousands of downloads within the first day and then eventually that sort of tailored off as, as things are want to do after a launch. Um, but we had thousands of downloads and it was really exciting. What was less exciting was our revenue numbers. Because we hadn't op optimized our channel, our res revenue looked something like this and then dropped down to almost nothing. So we hadn't actually optimized our channel, hadn't done any testing, and because of that, we missed out on a huge amount of money. And it was only until we started testing, optimizing our tests, that we eventually started to make some revenue. So this is why. This area right here is why we channel test first and optimize our messaging, our pricing, before we get press and then end up launching. Now the other reason we do this is because this launch card that we've got we only get to play it once. This, the launch of your product is going to be the easiest press you ever get. It's still not easy, but it's easier than any other press. And because we'd wasted it on an unoptimized product, we never got to get that press again. So you really want to make sure that when you play this card, this free press card, that you've got everything optimized so you can take full advantage of it. So let's show you what this looks like when you do it right. All right, what we really want to do is we want to go in reverse order. We want to test our channels first, optimizing our price point and our marketing message. Then, and only then, do we line up press and launch. So I'll give you some examples of things that I've done. I was working on an app to help people be on time. And I wanted to know, you know, how do I market this thing? What's the right price point? And I wanted to know that before I built the product. So what I did is I, I used this uh, software called Self-Starter. It's open source crowdfunding platform. And I built a crowdfunding site. But I tweaked it a little bit. I added A-B testing to it. So what that means is that I could run a crowdfunding page, uh, but I could have one of the pages say, always be on time. And then I could have another page, the B variation, say, never be late. Then I could send some folks to my website. Half of them would see this version, half would see the other version. And then I could figure out which one of these versions converted better. Now, converted is sort of a weird concept in terms of crowdfunding because normally crowdfunding sites say, hey, you know, if we can get up to $5,000 or 5,000 people to order, then we'll build the product. In this case, that's exactly what I told everyone but I had actually had no intention of ever reaching that goal. In fact, I wasn't even going to send a total of 5,000 people to the site, so there's no way we could meet the goal. What I was really trying to do is optimize the conversion rate so I could figure out how to make the most money per visitor. Speaking of which, once I optimized the marketing message, it was time to optimize the price point. So I tried some experiments where some people saw $5, some people saw $10, some people saw $20, and it, it turns out that the app converts the best in terms of dollars per visitor at $25. Now that's something I never would have known had I not tested it myself. Who would have thought an app can convert really well at $25? Now of course it feels a little funny to charge 
one person one price and another person another price. But at the end of the day, what I'm going to do is give everyone who ordered this free access to the app. So everyone will get it free. Another bonus about this test is that we, tr we tested pricing with actual credit cards. One of the hardest things to do is ask people what they would pay because they don't know. But if you make them get out their credit card, you're guaranteed to know that they would pay that price. All right, so once we've optimized our messaging and our price, now we can start turning on the press. Turns out there are two things that are key to getting press. One, relationships. The more relationships you have with bloggers and reporters, the better off you're going to be. It's just it's the simple fact that they're more likely to write about you if they know you and trust you. The other thing that's going to help is if you do all the work for the reporter. These reporters, they're under tight deadlines. They've got lots of people asking for their attention. So if we can do all the work for them in terms of write, basically writing the article, coming up with graphics, the more likely they are to write about us. So a little hack that some friends and I put together, um, I'll tell you about. And it's actually kind of interesting because we have no PR experience at all. But this little growth hack ended up uh, getting us a little press. So what we did is we realized that Google News, this is a website that aggregates news content from around the world. They actually have an API. And you can use that API to say, hey, Google News, give me all the articles about a certain topic. Now, we were working on a crowdfunding aggregator. It was kind of a fun idea where, well, what if we took all the information from Indiegogo and Kickstarter and the other crowdfunding sites and put them all together on a map? So we asked Google News, can you give us all the articles that have been written about crowdfunding? And it did. And it turns out that we came up with a total of 700 articles that have been written about crowdfunding. So we said, great, we've got 700 articles that have been written about crowdfunding. Can we get the contact information for the authors of those articles? And we turned to Mechanical Turk for that. So Mechanical Turk is a really cool website where people do uh, little amounts of work for a little amount of money. So we fed all 700 articles in, into Mechanical Turk and said, hey, I'll pay you three cents, a whopping three cents, if you will find the contact information for the person who wrote this particular article. And it worked. We ended up getting email addresses for 350 reporters who had written about crowdfunding. So to us, this, is, this was a gold mine, right? We, no PR experience at all, but we suddenly had email addresses and first names of all the people who'd written uh, or half the people who had written these articles. So then we built our press kit. And this is about doing all the work for the reporter. This press kit was just a blog post. It was pass password protected. But inside it, we had infographics about our launch. We had the bios of the entire team, screenshots of the product. And most importantly, we had why we were building it. Reporters really like to talk about the founders of a company and what their motivation is in solving a particular problem. So make sure when you do your press kit, you include that information. We also said that this information is under embargo. And what that means is that no one who we sent the information to is allowed to write about it until we say so. What that prevents is one author writing about your article and then sort of taking all the steam out of it for everyone else, because they all want to be the first to publish it to their readers. So we sent our press kit to these 350 people, said, don't write about us until we say so, and then we said so. So then we officially launched. We said, OK, you guys can write about us now. And it resulted in write-ups in Forbes, Mashable, Wired write up, wrote about us twice, the next web. In fact, we got written up in 13 different places on our launch day, even though we had no PR experience and we spent three cents per email address. So that's how you can hack together a strategy to optimize your channel and then go get press and launch. I'm Justin Wilcox. The blog is Customer Dev Labs. Get out there and let me know what you learned.